What's going on guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to another episode of What's Up With. And today we're going to talk about a doozy. What's up with George W. Bush on September 11th during the 9-11 bombings? Now this is going to be a strange one. I know it's going to be a lot of information for you guys to absorb. Please try to stay with me on this. For the people out there who have not been given this information before, I implore you to do your own investigation. Don't take my word for it. Don't take anybody's word for anything. Do your own investigation to find out the truth for yourself. If you do find the information that I'm giving in this video to be true, please leave a comment in the comment section below and share this video with as many people as you possibly can. Share with your family, your friends, and anyone you see because I think there's some things in this world that we as people need to know. Uh, if there is a ruling elite, which it seems to be, uh, pulling the strings and manipulating the masses of humanity, then at least the, the least that we can do is educate ourselves and kind of wake up. Now, everybody's not going to wake up. Some people are going to be watching, you know, the Kardashians. Some people are going to be watching Nicki Minaj. Some people are going to be watching Molly Cyrus. And, and out of all those people, there might be one or two who, who want to truly educate themselves on the trajectory our country and this world is going. And I'm one of the people who would rather know than not know. So definitely look up this information and uh, find out for yourself. But today we're going to be talking about George Bush. There's a lot of different subjects I can talk about George Bush on. But today, this subject in particular is going to be what he was doing during the 9-11 bombings on 9-11. But before I get into that, I'm going to give you guys a little background. George W. Bush, uh, who was <laughs> president of the country uh, two terms after his father, was actually a member of the Skull and Bones, the Skull and Bones Society. And uh, the Skull and Bones is an undergraduate senior secret society at Yale University. It's in New Haven, Connecticut. It is the oldest senior class landed society at Yale. The society's alumni organization, the Russell Trust Association, owns the society's real estate and oversees the organization. The society is known formally as the Bones, and the members are known as Bonesmen. So uh, this is a very old society. The Skull and Bones was founded in 1832. Uh, so it goes back quite a bit, almost 200 years. And uh, they have very secretive uh, means. They, they do things in a very covet means. And uh, whoever joins the Skull and Bones, they are sworn uh, to secrecy, to secrecy or death. They will die before they divulge the secrets and the plans of the secret society. The Skull and Bones is a very occult type society. They've been known to do very occult-like things. They have rituals. Uh, there's actually been a, a ritual that was recorded by someone from, from a, an adjacent building that caught a ritual of uh, new members being indoctrinated into the, the Skull and Bones. And it sounded like, to me, it sounded like uh, an exorcism. It sounded like demons. These people didn't sound human at all to me. But that's neither here nor there. This thing is definitely an occult type of society. The group Skull and Bones is featured in conspiracy theories which claim that the society plays a role in globalist, corporatist conspiracy for world control. Uh, and that is very true. Uh, I believe that the people who are members of the Skull and Bones do go on to be in positions of prominence and power. And uh, <laughs> I guess the list speaks for itself. If you guys would like to look up the list of Skull and Bones members, please do. It goes from everything from bankers to people in politics to presidents uh, to people in, in entertainment. There's been many, many Skull and Bones men uh, who moved on to do things far exceeding uh, the typical Yale alumni so definitely look that up I want to tell you guys about a couple of the guys who have been members of the Skull and Bones and the positions that they've gone on to as I've said before there have been tons and tons of Bonesmen and uh, but these are some of the ones that stuck out to me President William Howard Taft was a member of the Skull and Bones in 1878 uh, he was the first president uh, to be a Bonesman uh, Prescott Bush was a uh, a bonesman in class of 1916. Bush is to believe to have dug up and absconded with the skull of the legendary Native American warrior Geronimo during World War I. So this is a true story. Uh, I know the Native Americans have actually uh, gone and taken the skull and bones to, to court to actually get the skull of Geronimo back and they have not gotten the skull of Geronimo back. And it is uh, believed that Prescott Bush was the bonesman who actually dug up his skull and took it there for their occult rituals. Uh, you guys should look that up. I know that may sound <laughs> it may sound iffy, but this is uh, known information. This is public information, so you guys look that up. George Herbert Walker Bush, who was the the first George Bush president, was a member of the Skull and Bones in 1948. Uh, he was the second Bonesman ever to be elected president. 
So uh, it's obvious <laughs> that whatever this secret society is, people who come from the secret society, uh, they go through these rituals in the society, they're sworn to secrecy, then they come out and they move into very prestigious positions of influence and power in our country. So this is not a conspiracy, this is obvious. You can't tell me one school that all the presidents come from, it doesn't happen. You can't tell me one shopping mall that they shopped at and then they all become presidents, you can't. But this secret society seems to breed people who are placed in extreme positions of power. John F. Kerry was a Bonesman in class of 1966. Uh, the now senior senator and secretary of state from Massachusetts was only a college junior when he was tapped as a Bonesman after a childhood spent abroad with his diplomat father. So John Kerry, that's another well-known uh, politician, he was also in the Bones. You know, he was a Bonesman. Uh, he also ran against George W. Bush during that election and lost. But the fact is, there would have been a bonesman either way, Republican or Democrat. So this is something that we have got to look at. We cannot look away from these facts. He went through all the rituals and he was actually asked about this on live TV, which of course he did not respond because you are sworn to secrecy. And finally, the last one I want to talk about because this episode of What's Up With is about this man, George W. Bush. He was in uh, the Skull and Bones in the class of 1968. He was the third bonesman to occupy the uh, office of the president. So these are the guys I'm going to talk about today, or at least George Bush I want to talk about. And I want to get you guys' thoughts on uh, this particular uh, subject. Okay, so on September 11th, George W. Bush uh, was making his rounds for the country. He was down in Sarasota, Florida at Emma E. Booker Elementary School. He was visiting a second grade class that was being taught by Sandra Key Daniels at this school. And uh, this particular day, he was reading a book with the class. Now, the, the name of the book, which some of you probably already know, is The Pet Goat or My Pet Goat. And uh, this book is a story of a girl who has a pet goat and the pet goat eats everything and it gets in a lot of trouble and uh, you know it's a children's book and a lot of people see that title alone as occult symbology going back to what the Skull and Bones are really into. The Skull and Bones are really into occult symbology, symbolism and uh, the pet goat could be a symbol of Baphomet which is a deity uh, symbolizing Lucifer or Satan. It's Baphomet and uh, so a lot of people really think of that when they think of the pet, the pet goat. And uh, so he was in this classroom with these students and this teacher and they're reading this book. And uh, he was holding the book and his book was actually upside down. So it was really weird because it's the kind of stuff that you do when you're doing, you know, occult type rituals. A book could be upside down or you could be standing a certain way and it can be interpreted so many different ways. You guys let me know if I'm just losing my mind or not. But I want you guys to hear the actual uh, and see the video of what was going on in this classroom. I want you guys to hear the words that were being spoken by the students in the classroom. I want you guys to hear the tone that they are instructed to use, the speed of the words and the repetition of the words. And I want you guys to hear what they are saying. And I'll be back after this video. Get ready to read all these words on this page without making a mistake. Look at the letter at the end and remember the sound it makes. Get ready. Pipe. Yes, pipe. Get ready to read this word the fast way. Get ready. Key. Yes, key. Sound it out. Get ready. Key. Sound it out. Get ready. Key. What word? Key. Yes, get. Boys and girls, sound this word out. Get ready. Steal. What word? Steal. Yes, steal. Read these words the fast way. Get ready. Play. Yes, play. Get ready. Must. Yes, must. Let's read these words the fast way without making a mistake. Get ready. Kite. Yes, kite. Get ready. Kick. Yes, kick. Get ready. Steal. Yes, steal. Get ready. Play. Yes, play. Get ready. Must. Yes, must. Go to go speak the reader up from under your seat. Open your book up to lesson 60 on page 153. <laughs> Now, if you just saw that for the first time, that may challenge your belief system, and I understand if you want to turn this video off. Uh, that is insane. It's one of the craziest things that a person, a rational human being, could ever see. Uh, how much coincidence is too much coincidence? Uh, I'd say that much. Immediately after these kids chanted, plane must hit steel, 
we're under attack. 9-11 attack. Now, I don't know if these people know something that we don't. I mean, these people are the most prominent people on Earth, and they're obviously into a cult type of shit. You know, they're, they're worshipping deities, and they do all these crazy rituals. Maybe there's something going on that we don't know about. Maybe there's a possibility. I'm not the kind of person to say I know everything based on my limited experience in life. But one thing I can say is, that was a hell of a coincidence. One of the strangest coincidences that I think we could ever see as a human being. Um, do you think it was a coincidence, though? Do you think that there's a coincidence that George Bush is inside of a classroom reading the goat with a bunch of children chanting, plane must hit steel, and that a plane hits the steel on the, the World Trade Center? That is insane. Um, and I know that if you would never saw that before, that it might be a shock to your system. Please look this up for yourself. Find out what they were doing. Find out what book they were reading. I don't want anybody out there to think that somehow that video was doctored or they were doing something totally different uh, at the date of this occurrence because I promise you that is what was going on. Uh, there's a lot in this world that we don't understand, guys. There's a lot around us that we're not able to see. Our perspective is very limited. We can see only 2% of visible light. It's just, you know, our reality is very questionable. And so my question to you guys is this. What's up with George Bush on 9-11? I want you guys' thoughts on what you just saw. You guys tell me what just happened. I don't care what my belief is or what you guys think my belief is on this whole situation. I want to know what you guys think because ultimately the thought processes of the masses are what's going to make or break our society. If everyone's a fool, then we're fucked. If a few people question, we're still screwed. If a majority of people wake up to the potential of what's really happening in the world, we might be okay. You guys let me know what you think about that video. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of What's Up With. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.